The Lyrid meteor shower peaks and the moon and sun interact for a unique hybrid solar eclipse. Let's take a look at what you can go out to see and image in the night sky for April of 2023. I'm Michael Martin and this is Late Night Astronomy. We start off April with one of the most relaxing things that you can do in amateur astronomy that requires absolutely no equipment to go out and enjoy, meteor showers. The second major meteor shower of 2023 peaks this month in the form of the Lyrids. Let's load up Sky Safari to take a look at when and where you need to look in the night sky to get the most out of this event. They peak on the night of April 22nd into the early morning of April 23rd. Begin your night by going outside around 11 p.m. on the 22nd and face towards the northeast. Look for the brightest star just over the horizon in this part of the sky, Vega. In between the Lyra and Hercules constellations is where the Lyrids will appear to shoot from. Thankfully this year, the moon will be out of the way allowing you to maximize the 10 to 15 meteors per hour that can occur under ideal conditions in the northern hemisphere. Remember that patience is a virtue when it comes to meteor showers, and you can be out for 15 to 30 minutes sometimes and only see a couple. The Lyrids may not be the most impressive show of the year, but we are treated on occasion to some of the famous fireballs from this shower that can streak through the nighttime sky. Let's leave Earth's atmosphere and go a little deeper into space with some of the best views of the moon right now for the month of April. The phases of the moon start with a full moon on April 6th, followed by a third quarter moon on April 13th, new moon on April 20th, and first quarter moon on April 27th. In terms of lunar events this month, a thin crescent moon makes a close pass to Mercury and Uranus on April 21st. A more impressive sight, however, will be the moon passing close to Venus on April 23rd, and then coming close to Mars on the 25th. The main event for the moon this month for some of you is going to be the unique event known as a hybrid solar eclipse. It's important to remember to always wear certified safe solar glasses and certified solar gear whenever you're attempting to view the sun. Now what is a hybrid solar eclipse? It's actually a pretty unique event which begins with an annular solar eclipse where the moon doesn't quite cover the entire surface of the sun, and then it transitions to a total solar eclipse where it does cover the entire sun before going back to being an annular solar eclipse again. This hybrid solar eclipse will be best viewed from Indonesia and Western Australia on April 20th. Double check your local news for more specific times on when and where to safely view this event if you live in that region of the world. And again, remember to always wear solar glasses when viewing the sun, even if large amounts of it are covered by the moon. This month is really a mixed bag when it comes to the planets, with Mercury rising highest around April 11th for the best views that you're going to be able to get of it this month. The most prominent planet this month is Venus, which shines higher and brighter each night as it continues its climb into the western sky throughout April. Take a look at it through a telescope at the start and end of the month to see if you can notice a difference in the phase of it on its surface. Venus will continue to put on an incredible show until it reaches its highest point in the night sky in early June. Continue to track its phases by sketching or imaging it in the months to come. If you're able to take a picture of Venus or any other object in the night sky this month, be sure to share it with me over on Instagram at Late Night Astronomy. Our friendly red neighbor Mars continues to move away from Earth as it sails through the constellation Gemini. Jupiter spends the month too close to the Sun for any observations, and Saturn starts to make its way higher in the early morning southeast sky. Our two final planets, Uranus and Neptune, are tough targets as well this month, with Uranus close to the horizon in the west after sunset, and Neptune close to the horizon in the east before sunrise. As we leave our solar system behind and travel into deep space, 
It's important to remember that getting away from as much light pollution as you possibly can, and that does include the moon, is gonna really maximize your experience, particularly for this portion of the video. All of the objects mentioned in this part of the video have been viewed or imaged from my own backyard under a Bortle 5 sky. The telescope that I use is an Orion XT8i Dobsonian, and the equipment that I use to image is a Canon DSLR, Ioptron Skyguider Pro, and Samyang 135mm lens. Let's begin the month of April by going outside and looking up about an hour and a half after sunset towards the east. There you will come across the constellation Leo, and our main targets this month to kick off galaxy season, the Leo Triplet. This collection of three galaxies is made up of two Messier objects, M65 and M66, and one galaxy that Charles Messier missed, but would later be discovered by William Herschel, NGC 3628. These three galaxies show up through my telescope as faint, dim, fuzzy blurs at about 50 times magnification as the light from them has traveled 30 to 40 million light years to my dark adapted eye in my backyard. Through long exposure astrophotography, NGC 3682 really stands out due to it being edge on from our perspective with the other two galaxies taking on a more classic spiral look. Take your time studying these galaxies. I found various levels of success viewing them between 50 and 100 times magnification from my location. And this image I took of the Leo triplet consists of about two hours worth of stacked data made up of light, flat, dark, and bias frames that were stacked in Deep Sky Stacker and processed using PixInsight. Galaxy season is truly upon us, and just down from the Leo triplet that we've looked at in April, lies a wealth of galaxies in the Virgo cluster, but we'll save those for May. I've got another video covering more deep sky objects that you can find using Sky Safari this spring, and I'll be sure to leave a link to that video in the description below. Those are just some of the incredible things that you can get out to see and image in the night sky for the month of April. If you've enjoyed this video, please like it and consider subscribing to this channel to join our growing community. But most importantly, let me know what you plan to get out to see, and please get some good conversations going on about the incredible things up in our night sky in the comment section below. Thank you all so much for your continued support, and clear skies from late night astronomy.